Welcome back. So I know it's been a hot minute since I've been on here. Um, it's been a while since I've done some yard work and try to make things fancy and nice. So I took the cooler part of the season to get that done and just take a break from social media because that's kind of a good thing to do sometimes. Now the heat's in, it's a... Uh, unfortunately, my shop does not have AC. But I work outside and in attics. So I'm used to worse far temperatures like 130, 40, 50, 60. So what we're gonna do, this is some apple wood and we're making a salt grinder out of it. So I've already got it marked to put up in the band saw. Just gotta cut it, put a blank out of it here. You can see it. All right, so I'm gonna put a blank here and then I'm going to come and make cuts here and here. And then I'm going to cut it in half and then take these two pieces, flip them together, crack facing each other, kind of book matched, and then fill it with epoxy. It's just got a dirty crack. <laughs> oh, I couldn't help myself, but yeah, I gotta get that cleaned up before I cast the epoxy. We can't have dirty cracks in a box. It just won't work out right. So, um, got a fire for bandsaw on this one. And that's not a place where you would like to go. I've got cigarettes and brandy, which could come in handy. If you just help me loosen up my hand. This is how I do my molds. It's essentially just cardboard and tuck tape. Um, I hot glue the edges down. That seems to come off fairly easy on the HTB, HDPE plate. Um, that and I also glue the pieces down. Eventually you'll see me glue those down too. But after I get the sides glued down, I'll go back with some little piece of tuck tape like I did right there and just seal that corner off real good. And I came back and I believe I glued that corner down. It didn't leak in the pot. But it's also a good idea to keep you some mold release and spray the inside of your pot just in case you do have a leak because pressure pots are quite expensive and a epoxy leak would not be a good idea. Be a very expensive mistake. The epoxy I decided to go with is the Illumilite. Um, clear slow you'll see me sometimes standing around I'm thinking like a dumb dumb sometimes and the mica powder that I've decided to go with is eye candy which I always use their stuff and you can use code EPS15 to get a discount but I went with the clear slow because the apple wood having so many holes and voids and some of those I couldn't get out because Beetles had bored through it or whatever. Ended up having some problems how to fix it some glue later on. But it's really, really thin and it allows it to seep in and get in those places real good and allows the bubbles to come out a whole lot better.
And right now I'm just taking off some of the excess. Um, I always like to cast a little bit thicker and a little bit deeper than needed. Just so you get better swirls or curls. I don't know, it's just what I do. And I save those cutoffs for a buddy of mine who started to do knife making, so I should have some pictures up of social media on those knives eventually. So we'll see. And I'm just taking off the edges. That Carter and Sons bowl beater, it is great for just taking off chunks. And this is my little six millimeter, eight point something, I can't remember what it is, a little carbide. And I ended up having some cracks in the epoxy. It might be getting a little old since I haven't been doing too much. So uh, I decided to go through there and hit it with some thin CA and let it seep in and hopefully keep anything from snapping loose.
I wanted to wipe it down with Danish wool first. I've done a few of the bowls with some apple wood before and it really brings the darkness of the color out. Nice golden color to it. And I let it sit for two days to let the glue cure. The glue, dead gummit. The um, Danish oil to let it cure. And doing these finishes, the CA finish, make sure you've got good ventilation. Like seriously, when that stuff starts to cure and gas off, it's <laughs> it'll get you attention burn your nose make your eyes water all that good stuff but slow speed many 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 layers i think i ended up putting around 10 layers or so and it kind of helps if you let it sit there for a while before you ever use any activator it'll eventually level out and plus if you give it time to self-cure before you hit that activator on it, it runs less likely of chances of uh, getting any kind of bubbles or anything like that from it activating too fast. Oh, and that's actually a silicone pad in my left hand. Just a piece of leftover silicone from when I made the bowl mold. CA glue doesn't stick to that. In case you ever decided to mess around with it. Saves your fingers. I came back with the power drill and sent it at 320 and then all you have to do once you get it all back flat flat start your wet sanding at 400 go all the way to 2000 use your flannel buffing wheel car polish it's a long lengthy process if you decide to give it a go but the reward is very rewarding And go ahead and roast me on the old school American Eagle shirt. I had that thing when I was like 25, 38 now. Yeah, I'm still going to wear it as a shop shirt. It might be a little tight. Hey, I'm still proud to be able to fit in the thing. And this is the process of it getting put together in the cluster of a mess that was. Not really. I've made one before, so... I mean, it's still, I forgot to cut the um, little recess in for the piece that I'm putting in now. But, hey, one's got an any, one's got an Audi, and that's just how it is, unfortunately. So this one is actually going to the same guy, Mr. Shipley, that bought the Elm Burl um, Pepper Mill and the Red and Black Hall Epoxy Bowl. And the reason why I like using this kit is, you'll see in a little bit, that I end up having to cut it. And then you can rasp the ends of it back out and it fits all back in place. So that's a good thing about this one is you can't really mess up. You can make them the length, whatever size you want. And you can see right here, that's what I'm doing is measuring how far I have to cut. Um, and marking it and so forth and so on. So yeah.
And I figured I'd throw you a daylight photo in there. It's one I took of it out in the yard after I got done one day. This is it. All buffed up, waxed up, shining nice and pretty. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.